some politicians are beginning to declare their intention. People like the APC leader, Rajabala uh we also have Ojus or Kalu, uh, Debumahi, Kingsley Moralu, and Amir Rufai, among others. Now, some of them, like uh, Aswaju Bola Ametinubu, has been to the presidency to declare his intentions to President Ahmad Bukhari, same with Dave Umar. And a lot of reactions have trailed this visit to Mr. President. Some of us, is it necessary? Are these visits necessary? What if you don't go to the president? Does it mean that your intentions will not be known? Others are also asking, should the president be receiving such people? You're welcome to the program this evening. I am Mariam Sakari, and I have as my guest today the Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. He is Musa Dabam, you're welcome to the to the program. Now, in my introduction, I was talking about the visit of the APC leader to the presidency a couple of days ago, and also Dave Umahi. Now, a lot of people have reacted to this visit, and some have actually said that you know. Mr. President should not be involved in this kind of, uh, you know, situation. What do you make of the visit, first of all? Let us start from there. Let's hear you. Well, the, the visit simply symbolizes that the President is the owner of the party. The party as an institution is being uh, Battered down, being weakened, has not a major force that means who can hand it over the aspirant because by process of democracy, everybody will conduct itself within the rules of the party. Mm -hmm. The party are the ones that form for aspirant, and the aspirant's first part of all is a political party mm -hmm. to declare their intention. The one for the president of Nigeria for the political party. And the political party will be taking stock of the number of people that are showing interest to run for president. But simply because the president has opened the door, the president has said that he has a preferred candidate, he doesn't want to mention. Mm -hmm. The president has said, I don't care about 2023. These are two conflicting issues that naturally would have generated the kind of confusion you have. It's good that uh, uh, former governor of Lagos State have opened the door. The governor of the uh, Boeing have followed suit. Mm -hmm. Oji Uzokalu is talking. Uh, there are others along those lines that are coming up there. Now we we'll want to see whether President will take uh, the hours out of his office. Just receiving people who want to notify him that they want to run for president. This is the danger the nation is facing. This is the danger democracy is facing. When you look in a political institution, the consequences is that it will create a lot of unnecessary behavior that will be detrimental to a true, process, true political process that is supposed to have discharged its responsibility according to the set of the rule. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to create more problems for APC. But the fact that the president said, I have a candidate, I don't want to mention him because I'm afraid they will eliminate it. That creates a competition. That creates a very worrisome situation. Within those who feel, okay, I'm the closest to the press, or I am the one. So it also opens the door for a mutual conflict within the APC itself. Mm. The ability to reconcile themselves now is becoming more difficult, obviously because of this. They made uh, a pronouncement that the governors are going to meet and resolve issues and give a tentative for convention. It has never hold. Now, I am from the East, mm. but I'm saying that it's dangerous to create a coma within a political environment that is going to affect the entire process. Mm. Because any ruling party, any party that is a ruling party, has a responsibility to stabilize the political environment. But these are the reasons why you have people who have ambition becoming so fixated 
we are having a complication and complex in terms of determining their own future. They just want to be handpicked. And by the action of the president, we have suggested clearly that he's going to handpick whoever he wants. Mm. So these are very dangerous signals uh, to the political situation. And simply because people, politicians, are not learning their lesson. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to consult. They keep on riding on sentiment of zoning and this and that. They put away issue of competence, issue of ability to understand the nation, issue of having a blueprint how to uh, you know, bring the country together in view of the obvious challenges we are having now around the security lines, along the political lines, along so many other sectors that relate to the peace and stability of the country. It is tragic. And I don't know if the president wants to continue this way. Whether it's going to be healthy for him, healthy for the ABC, is what we are watching to see. But so far, the signal is not good in mm. terms of uh, political impact. Some people have actually described uh, this move as being frivolous. In fact, some people have mm -hmm. said it is not politically, it is not... Uh, correct. It, it, yes, correct. You know, and some others have also said at a time when we should be moving away from Godfather. Godfather. So, for some people, what they feel is that, you know, they're clearly showing that even though the president is trying to distance, distance himself from 2023 elections, but the signals are, are telling people otherwise. Now, if the president says, I don't care about 2023, then president said, I have somebody in mind, but I don't want to blow. How is he distancing himself? The first. Number two, this good federalism is what brought us where we are today. It's what is taking the nation to its need. It's what is exacerbating all this insecurity. Somebody feels that no matter how competent, how viable, how energetic he is, he cannot make it unless somebody stands for him. In a country that has over 200 million population, he's hanging his face on one single individual, not even God that has created him. Not even God that have given him the talent. Not even God that have given him the wealth. But he believed that in the absence of someone that God has put there through the powers of God, he is not relying back to that God. He is relying on individual to, to say, okay, go ahead or don't go ahead. Assuming the president said, don't contest. It means they will go back. So which simply defined and clearly explain that they want they are not ready to rule the country. They are ready to be subservient to someone who they believe is uh, someone that can determine their future, the future of the country. And this is a very dangerous signal, especially we are heading towards election. It's not just for APC. You know, there are decisions that you can take that will start create the entire environment, will make them very chaotic, very distrusting. Uh, more so now we are in an area of distrust. So have, have affected virtually everything we are doing. Nobody trusts anybody. Everybody does things with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, adamant behavior, non-caring attitude, so dehumanizing, so disrespectful, and so lawless to the system. It's not good for the country, and I believe, and I hope, uh, and I pray the president will look at this from a very dignified perspective and, and make a stop to it. He should shift this into a political party. They should go to the parties that they belong to. Go and discuss with the party. Present your credentials to the party. And allow the party to conduct the primaries for everyone who wants to contest the uh, uh, primary to become the candidate of the party. But when the president begins to double uh, in the party appear, uh, that is why you are having the issues we are having. And that is why you see the, the National Assembly was making an attempt to impose a direct primary. Because they believe the governors are threat to them, will determine they are coming back or not coming back. These are all associated problems that is reducing the culture of democracy and the culture of respect and decency and the culture of competence. Mm. Now, do you think that, you know, this is like an expression of revered age-old African culture of deferring to the elders before stepping out? I don't do know where, where, that that? Culture, where that culture is. If democracy is not part of our culture. We inherited that system. System of government. Mm. When you refer back to our culture, our culture has rules and regulations governing our behaviors right from the time where we are. Yes, along those lines, you know, the Muslim uh, always leads or you go to him to seek for advice and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But in a democracy where franchise matters, the 
define you know for you to exercise your fundamental human right your choice and privileges on what you want to do you don't make an attempt to compromise or bring any similarity along those lines the fact of the matter is that democracy about the people is for the people is the government of the people by the people and for the people and then through this process you elect your leader this through this process the president was elected through this process parliamentarians were elected and all other systems that have to do with election are under this and then under the prerogative of the president as executive president he appoint he nominate names of ministers that will be ratified or approved by the national assembly mm. so this is where the division of level comes but all these things are being kept aside in the normal situation anybody who wants to run for president the first thing like in line with the INEC rules and regulations is consultation mm. this consultation has to cut across even political line because ultimately at the presidential level people will choose according to who is competent to provide leadership for that year this time around is hardly for people to go along political line mm. but you know the politicians or those who are managing political parties particularly those that have ruled the country have made people to be fixated if you have 10 million and you want to run for for councilorship mm. if you go to ABC you are likely to spend 8 million even before you go to the front if you go to PDP the same thing. but you go to other parties maybe most likely you spend 1 million Mm. and then you use the other money to reach out in terms of logistic services and other things but the moment this party is going to be taken you will get stranded financially and you begin to you know create problems within the party you call them all sort of names they exploited you as this are culture that has been entrenched in the pdp before it has now moved to the apc and apc have done nothing to purge themselves from the negative vices that affected pdp and make pdp to lose it mm. Now you, you talked about uh, you were speaking about so much money that uh, if you want to get a ticket, someone has act, has also said that 2023 uh, money may fail. Do you share in that? Uh, Lightly like, about money back. Lightly like, like, like money, my my friend, because you know Nigeria went out with all, with all their minds at heart. Mm -hmm. The elite. The political gigalot had a certain concern i was in pdp then i was part of it you know we believe that okay buhari is a tall one mm. buhari have shown that he's a man with quality with capacity and ability to create that. those were the convincing reasons even some of us at that time did anti-party and voted for it is the anti-party of the large block of the PDP that made buhari president not even the APC. Mm. it is an internal crisis of the PDP. you know that shifted the large block of the pdp the northern into supporting mm. they still belong to the pdp but they move in the thinking that there will be a new order there will be a new culture of discipline and leadership there will be a human face in policy and programs of government these were the basic hope that led to people selling sugar cane selling water contributed their heart and money to support president Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, all these things have turned out not to be real. They turn out to be a figment of imagination. They turn out to be a massive propaganda, which have unveiled itself, and which the president have admitted also strategically. There is a security issue in the country. There is economic issue in the country. Mm. There is restlessness in the country. There is lack of employment in the country. The business environment is, is very harsh. It's very unconducive. And then every quarter we produce thousands of students out of school. And then you have people with skillful uh, work to do. You have not provided anything to do. So how do you avoid this kind of uh, sliding into anarchy that we are having today? Look at the South is that it was peaceful and stable. Every day you will hear in the last one week there are shootings, there are killings, there are burnings of assets. You know these are homogeneous people, but for whatever reason they shifted from who they are, from their natural being, to a different thing. Good laws have taken over a society, taken over uh, uh, normalcy in the state. The governors will give an order, nobody will respect it, no state actors will issue an order, people will comply. So there's a loss of legitimacy. This lot of legitimacy is what is leading us to think that are we really going to have 2023? Look at the Northwest, what is the kind of barbarism, the kind of anarchy 
the kind of cannibalism that is going on. People pulling human uh, uh, something in people intestines, intestines pork, private part, eating them. When did we like to give pass as a northerner? Then we are born with character, with tradition, with discipline, with fear of God, either Muslim or Christian. These were the doctrines of both the Muslims and the Christians. Fear of God, respect for, for, for humanity, decency and morality. Where are they today? Who is responsible? Of course the president is responsible because the president and commander is this. He took an order of office by the constitution of the Federal Republic of India to provide, protect lives and property of every nation. He also swore with the Holy Quran to protect life and property of every night. So any loss of life that is not within the due process, that has not been prosecuted properly and adjudicated upon for, to, for him to be, uh, uh, either to be killed or otherwise, innocent people to be wiped in the village, you must account for it. There's no choice about it. Now, some people would also argue with you and say that if you talk about insecurity, date back to even before this present administration is something that has been ongoing for some decades now in, in Nigeria. So, yes, as Mr. President, the box stops on his table, but some others would argue with you saying some of these issues have always been with us uh, in Nigeria, even before this administration. It is not in contest, it is not in doubt, it is not in debate. And that is why when the President is contesting for presidency, he has identified the challenge. challenges. He even gives a date like timetable or precise say six months, everything will be clear. Those videos, those evidence are there, which means he has been having security brief of what is going on and he is aware that the issue of Boko Haram was towards the end of Ubasanjo's era. Ubasanjo handed over the Boko Haram issue to late President Yaradua. When, when Yaradua died, Jonathan took over. And when Jonathan finished, Buhari took over. So there are sequence. Nobody says that it started during Buhari. Mm. But the banditry, the kidnapping, the maiming, the raping, and every day turning thousands of orphans, turning thousands of widows under whose regime? It's under Buhari's regime. Now Boko Haram was under a different regime, which he have inherited, but the environment that was created and become available for use for this different segment of elements expanded under his regime. It's not as if kidnapping started during President Bahari's regime. It was there. But it's not as bad as what we are seeing right now. Killings were not as bad as what we are seeing now. The quantum of people that are dying, if you if you take the instance of uh, this country that have gone into civil war, I just saw the statistics that people are dying more in Nigeria compared to countries that are going into civil war, killing themselves. These are statistics that have been generated both by the United Nations and so on and so forth. The killing of Zamfara, it takes the United Nations to issue a statement. They will take responsibility. The president must take responsibility. And I'm happy he's taking responsibility for that. He is given order. Whether that order is being complied with is a different thing. But he is the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And therefore, he is the accounting officer of the lives and properties of every single Nigerian. It's his responsibility. So nobody is arguing otherwise that there were no security before he comes in. Now you came in, you made a security agency. The Boko Haram bombing have reduced drastically. Mm -hmm. But the killing and the maiming volume have increased. Now which is, which, which is much easier to handle? Was the bombing not killing people? Now, if the, no, if the number of bombings that are going up have gone down, the number of innocent lives being lost, is it not on the increase? So which one do you prefer? Which one is more safer? But this is the tragedy of the moment. Mm. Let me take you back to something you said earlier on. Uh, you were in the main opposition party at the time, which was yes, the ruling the PDP. party, the PDP. Yes. And uh, you mentioned something, a lot of, uh, you know, some of you did anti-party and voted for Mr. President. Do you have any regret looking back? Do you have any regret no. for voting the APC in I, I, I don't have regret because the conviction then and our, our, our mindset then was that we tried to do everything to reform PDP. 
He didn't. And there will no be backup. There is no backup. And the election was about every effort, you know, to make PDP do the need. They have not been. PDP was followed by their arrogance, by their imposition, by their recklessness and irresponsibility. And we predicted we lost the election. I was among the arrogance that was partly on air when the PDP will be released. Because when you get out of track, you deviate from the visions of the founding father of the PDP. You allow rascals and criminal elements to hijack an institution that was established by visionary leaders, quintessential politicians, who have sacrificed their life, have been taken to prison to establish their political party. Mm. Criminal elements hijacked the party, started making imposition, started harassing, abusing of power. What do you expect? People have to shift. Those were the reason why we shifted. We do hope that President Buhari, given his experience, being a former head of state, being served as a minister in this country, as the governor of the of the of the northeast region, why would I have a doubt that he will be incapacitated in terms of delivery, in terms of making the environment very disciplined, very friendly for, for the entire country? These were the convincing reasons. Now voting for him, whether I regretted or not, no, I did not because my, it is my conscience I used to vote for him. Mm. Now it is not for him to satisfy my conscience or otherwise. Not me that have voted for him. Not only voted for him, I campaigned for him. I went to town, I went and told everyone, vote for Bahari. I did that. Nobody gave me anything. Nobody convinced me to do so. I'm old enough, I'm adult enough. I was part of those who contributed to the restoration of democracy in 1999. Mm. I don't have any country except Nigeria. I don't wish anybody to be an internal refugee to talk of a foreign refugee and i was born here and i believe in nigeria i don't want to be uh, either a citizen of any country on earth if i want to die let me die in my country let me be buried in my country for good or for bad and for that reason we believe that put partisan politics aside look at national interest look at stability look at what is workable for nigeria every day children are being born there is no planning for their future, either in terms of food, in terms of welfare, in terms of housing, there's actually almost zero plan. Recently, the uh, Egyptian president went and opened over one million housing Egypt, yeah. I don't know if you have been to Egypt or this, I've been to Egypt a couple of times. If you see the massive development, you will clearly understand that a visionary, determined leadership to change the course of things. During Abacha's regime, we have the biggest estate in Nigeria, uh, Gorimpa Estate. It's the biggest so far in Africa apart from when, when, when currently Egypt are going in, in free. That have leveraged a lot of pressure in terms of housing and all that. Now, tell me what the president has done in terms of expanding the housing, uh, the, 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 the housing welfare. In terms of welfare of the staff, in terms of welfare of the security agencies that have statutory responsibility of protecting lives uh, of citizens and property of citizens. Mm. What has he done in that sector? Okay, taking credit of railway system, which they have also inherited from the PDP, it wasn't something they started from the start. Now, when you said a party has failed 100%, is it a fair assessment? In 1999, what is the status of Nigeria? Even the discommunication that we are having now, what was it in 1999 before Was there an expansion? In the economy, in order activity, the answer is yes. So you don't sit down and say, failure. I don't know if it is, but a generalization of an institution that have over 16 years leadership have made some transformation. And you just make a simplicity statement over a management of the nation affairs. I think it's, it's very, very unfair. It's not like a statementship thing. You know, it's just like for me to say that APC scores zero percent in all they have done. I've not been honest. I'm not being sincere. There are areas that you can say, okay, there is an effort to overhaul, to strengthen, to expand the situation. There are areas that you can say that they rested themselves. The president rested himself. The economy is doing well, not doing well. The security situation is not doing well. Every day, saying that I have given them order to crush, to shoot aside anybody who is holding me. 
But you can see even offices in the village in Zafra, people with motorbike, almost 500 according to analysts. I watched the BBC video report, I watched the VOA video report, I watched our domestic media reports. People will be in motorbike and reinforcing themselves with motorbike. And we recently purchased for cars who have precision, 100% precision, to take away those things. You will wonder where where the military operations were when people are being killed. Mm. And is there absence of network in that village that they cannot communicate with the state that we are under uh, invaders, killers? whose language is not in tandem with our own here. The language they speak is mostly a foreign one. The dialect is a foreign one. Now, they will come and wipe up the whole village. And you have a constituted authority. You have a commissioner of police in the states. You have director of SSS in the states. You have civil defense in the states. You have SSS and other security apparatus in the state. You have area commandant. You have AIG in, in those zones. You have the brigade commandant, you know, in, in on those states. All in an effort to provide peace and security in the state. Where were they when all this thing is happening? Was it that there was no repertoire? So they don't know people are going to be massacred? How do you defend that? Now, these are some of the issues that we would uh, still be talking about. But still looking at 2023, as a seasoned politician, someone who has been in politics for a very uh, long time, we saw what happened before 2015, where there was a merger that enabled the APC, you know, uh, win the elections. Do you think, as someone who has been in politics, perhaps if other parties decide to come together, and there is a merger before 2023. Do you think that they stand a chance of removing APC from power from 2023? Let me tell you, from the permutations that are going on, mm. anything is possible. From the permutations that are going on. But I will not give you a conclusive uh, uh, position on that. But I know there's a lot of realignment going on that involve what the two major parties. People are looking for the way out. When you see people not even thinking together, it means they are living in a comfort zone. Mm. In a situation of crisis and survival of defeat, people have to keep aside their difference. It reminds me of the 1999 period when the likes of Let Remy, Let Adamu Choma, Sule Lamiro, uh, Irodan Musa, and others came together and fulfilled their differences and come up with a formidable political system that will restore democracy. This is the same scenario that we are right now. Mm. Politicians have to keep aside their difference. They should make a collection of the best, dissect the issue in the overall national interest. Look at the sentiments, the emotions all over the country, the, the regional issues, the, the agitation. What are the justifications? There are justifications for it. Because this is not the first time we are having leadership in Nigeria. So we have a record of things that have happened within the same zone, same homogeneous uh, set of people, did we abuse the process? Did we not allow the rule of law to prevail? What happened? These are facts that are visible that are touching. Now politicians who gang up to restore democracy have to go back to that era of nationalism, patriotism, restoration of democracy, restoration of the rule of law, above any other thing. In the absence of having a conducive environment, there is no position that will go out and contest. Recently, we had issues in Anambra State. Virtually all the commercial contestants couldn't enter Anambra State. Even when we had meeting with Aden, these were the same complaint political parties, you know, forwarded to the island. So these are similar situations in the Northwest. It's chaotic. Barbarism is going on. How do you conduct election right now, or if you have not done anything before 2023? How do you conduct election in the Southeast? where cannibalism is going on. How do you deal with uprising in the southwest? Agitations, conflict of bandits and what have you. Recently in Ondo, a village was also wiped out. So it, it cut across every it has engulfed the entire country. But was it because there's an absence of leadership? How do you define absence of leadership? 
How do you define lack of legitimacy? How do you define lack of capacity to create terms? So that individual citizens will understand if you commit a crime, you can't get away with it. How do you take away? Because this is what led to Godfatherism. Someone will go and kill a man because he believed that somebody in government somewhere to protect him. And this same president, being sworn, he said, I belong to no one, I belong to every, every. How does he just, how does he just, is that going to defend that? Because he said that on the door of the Nogre. He is yet to defend that. Well, this conversation will go on after the short break. I have with me in the studios, uh, Araji Musa, Shehu Musa Gabam, and we have been looking at the recent visit by some politicians to Mr. President, as well as issues leading to 2023 general elections. Now, when we come back, we will be looking at insecurity mostly in the northern part of the country. Please stay with us. We'll be right program is to stay of the union. Now before we went on that break we were looking at you know all the politicking going on before the 2023 general elections which should take place in February next year. <clears throat> I would like to uh, let's start off from this point. Uh, it, it's basically when they talk about election Two names readily come to mind, APC, PDP. It's been, you know, between those two since 1999. And you were also part of PDP, but you moved, you know, to the SDP. Why is it that when it is time for election, just like we're preparing for 2023 elections, you hear several other parties, you hear candidates come up, you know, and right after elections, as if, you know, you can liken them to submarine, you don't get to hear anything about these political parties until another election. Your party inclusive. What exactly is hiding some of these parties that they only come out during elections and after elections, you don't get to hear anything? Well, my party is not inclusive. If you've been following developments, SDP, equality, Providing progressive. I understand, but what I mean in terms of maybe taking positions, positions such as such as you you contest for virtually your party has candidates, you know, for several yes. positions, yes. but soon after that, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you this. the reason why you are having two parties. Over. One, because PDP spent 16 years now. There was so much empowerment. Politicians got a lot of patronage. Mm. So they have some liquidity to be around and to be making noise. Now APC took over, you know, and now in their eight years, government, mm. they are patronizing their own people. The young people are the one meeting up with the challenges of publicity, which is cross oriented, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. All activities, they have resources to, to provide for the party to go and conduct activities, youth organizations, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Party 
is very expensive. Extremely very expensive. And that is why after election we will hardly hear them because they don't have resources to provide what it takes to, to Nigeria. They have to keep quiet because there is no resource, mm. no support base. Whatever we are doing in our party is out of our own pocket, out of our commitment, out of strengthening democracy, and then you know providing an advice to the government that is that in power. Mm. That is the fundamental reason why other parties you cannot hear them, you cannot see them. That is that is the, the reason, not because they like ideas of what to do or they like leadership or capacity. No, far from it. They have very good people, but there is no resources to drive the ideology and what have you of the party. That is all, no any other reason other than that. I was part of the formation of party. Mm. In 1999, you know, when there was no money, uh, when the, uh, some people were arrested and sent to prison like Vimy and others, I know how many people were contributing 10,000, 20, 13, 14, 15,000 to the, to the formation of the party. Uh, because those who have money then are those who were revolving around a bunch of regime, military regime, they are the ones who had money. And that's why most of them, you will find out that they were associated around the military administration. But the career politicians have no money. So that is why there is an overshoot between non-career politicians hijacking the political space. And the career politicians were behind the scenes. As I'm talking to you in SDP, we have several people talking to us who want to run for president, including a lady, a very brilliant lady. Mm. We have, she came to the party, we had a conversation with her. We have three people from the Southwest that are directly talking to us. We have two people from the Southwest, and there are three Northerners, very powerful, that are also having conversation with us. But right now, all parties and aspirants are at the stage of consultation. Just like the way Bola said he went to consult the president or mm. the president. Yeah. But I have not made formal declaration. It is not yet for formal declaration. But aspirants, hopefuls, can go to their parties, have consultation with their parties, present their intentions to the parties, and the parties will receive them. And I want to say you will see more of it very soon uh, coming out as a result of the condominium, you know, uh, the recetarian, profiteering between the APC and the PDP. People have no option than to look for where they will have sort of protection and they will be allowed to showcase their brilliancy, their ideas, their vision, to what it takes. And that is left for Nigeria to decide who to elect as a president. Because so far, virtually everybody is saying whether you elected this government, you did not elect this, this government. As of uh, three days ago, it is everywhere, and there was a special coverage by China in the match. Everything has gone in the last three or four, four days. The bag of rice now I, I, I had is about 40,000. Now, when there is hunger that has saturated the country, how do you expect this? A hungry man is an angry man. I think the presidency is taking this. I hope the presidency are working on this because what we had there is a massive hoarding of food stuff. The, 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 the president of Niger, when he was elected recently, he took a dram dramatic, very drastic measures immediately. And there was a restoration of normalcy in Niger. Because what you need now, who would take the thing off the ground and restore normalcy and create that? Simply that's what it is. Now, if there are free market forces and somebody take advantage of the, 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 the capitalism to which we have embraced. We stock a whole food simply because we want to create scarcity, which will be detrimental for the security of the country, peace and unity of the country. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take him or why don't you take care of that? Because it's a sabotage. It's a national sabotage. It's a deliberate attempt to bring the country to its knees. The moment you, you, you instigate or you allow hunger to take people's homes, father will not have peace, mother will not have peace, neither will the children have peace within themselves. So this will go nationwide, and then inevitable crisis and anarchy will be on control. Then you talked about uh, the middlemen hoarding food. Is it also possible that the present insecurity we're having in the north is risk? You 
country have created a lot of in terms of food products. The only reason, the only reason, the only reason we used to have this in North is because people have to eat. And then with our character and our tradition and our discipline, they don't go extra mile to create crisis or instantly. Once somebody knows that if you go somewhere, you have something to eat, whether the food is sweet or not, you have something to eat. You have something to feed his family. Now, the storage of the food stock has been burnt down. The farm that they did, they can't go, the, the, the bandit have stopped them from going. People have been stopped. There's a metal gap going on. I don't know what the government, federal government is going to supplement that, whether they have, have sufficient food stock to pull into the market and make sure those who store the, uh, the, 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 the food stock, body, whatever it is, lost what they have done. It depends on how strategic the government is to alleviate this, this kind of situation. It's very sensitive, it's very dangerous, it can affect any situation. There's a video which has gone viral recently of one of the presidential aides who, you know, is showing off the, like, rice pyramid, local rice that the government has, uh, you know, <laughs> been able to store. So perhaps that could be uh, some sort of, uh, like, support for Nigeria. But not only, we, we saw those videos, we saw those pyramids in different locations. Mm. Last year, the federal government gave an order for the rice to circulate into the market to bring down the cost of food stock mm -hmm. and mess. What? Has the cost of the food stock gone down? The answer is no. So, what difference is it make? If there is sufficient rice being stocked, who are you stocking it when Nigerians are hungry, when people cannot feed their family? What are you stocking? Is it for showbiz? Or to, to make your citizens comfortable, that you have something to supplement, you are going to take care of those that are holding food apart from arresting them and persecuting them, because there is no law that allows you to hold food in order to create anarchy for the country. Now, in the absence of that, and you are claiming, uh, I saw the president uh, interview on channels and NT and so on and so forth, where he said, we have food to feed ourselves. Why is the food? If there is a food, why the crisis? Because I was privileged to be in government. I understand those issues. Part of the people we are having in communities is because they have food to eat, even if they don't have money to send their children. Now, in the absence of it, apart from they don't have food, some criminal elements will go and wipe them and kill them. And then there is a migration process. They will settle in primary schools or some other place. This is not about leadership is about human face. What has been about that? If you marry the governor of uh, Bornoski, can you give me a second governor that is so proactive in dealing with these issues? So far he's taking out the IDP camp. Can you give mention one? Now this, this is the statistics of what the country is going through. Now I'm not shifting the entire blame to the president and commander. Largely, some of these problems, the governors are responsible for creating this energy in the state. Because there's a great dislocation, there's mismanagement of both power and digitalization of power. The local governments are virtually dead, that are close to the people, to the community. The, those that are supposed to be elected as councillors in the local government, they virtually don't exist because they form a council in the local government. If the government, local government chairman is not functioning, they can impeach it. Just like the Western Assembly can be impeach a governor. Are they alive? Are they functioning? Now the president has served an executive order mandating direct transfer money into local government. Mm -hmm. And he told the chairman of the local government, if you allow the governor to carry the money from your account, we will hold you responsible. Are they holding them responsible? Have you heard of it as a media person? Certain local government have been arrested because the governor took money out of that local government account. Have you heard of that? Did you check the, 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 the transfer process? Money will be transferred to a local government in less than two minutes it has been taken out. As a journalist, do the investigation. You, you will cry, nobody beats you. You will get worried, are we really running a nation? What is going on? Are we normal? Now, I'm talking about insecurity, which we started you know, at the beginning of this 
program. Some people have said enough is bleeding, and you have also mentioned uh, you came from Zampara to Katana State to Ebi, Niger, you know, Kaduna, to mention, you know, just for a few, bandits have unleashed terror on the people, which has become like a daily thing, especially now the news coming from Zampara State, where we have people who have become cannibals, like you said, eating human art. What have you to say about the level of insecurity, the way it has degenerated in mm. the northern part of the country? Well, I wouldn't describe it as bleeding anymore. It is a genocide word. It's hard beyond it. When you say bleeding, blood is coming out of somebody or unjustifiably as a sort of aggression or that. But this one is a massacre. It's a genocide. But purely, there's no nothing more than if you can go and wipe out a village in a state that was properly constructed with government stock. Village, hundred of people, different statistics, five hundred were killed. No, they say two hundred. No, they say fifty people. Even if it is one school, unjustifiable. Does that define law and order or lawless? People have taken law into their hands and nothing is happening about it. The, the military men and women and other scriptures are doing their very best. A lot of purchases of art and software were gone into trillions. A lot of training is ongoing. But when a crime is committed, you look at the nature of that crime that has been committed. You are trying to get your behind and why should such a magnitude of crime be committed? Why should a magnitude of citizens be killed? How do you get your bearing? How do you console yourself that this is not a deliberate act? When people will go on bike in their hundred and you have the highest security agencies that have surveillance facilities, have repertoire system, have intelligent collection system, and then do you call that bleeding? That is a genocide. Now those that are responsible for genocide, did you call them to order? Did you arrest them? Did you prosecute them? Now those that were saddled with responsibility of protecting lives and property, have they done their job? Were they sleeping when the crime is being committed? What have they done? Have you summoned a, 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 a very terror security report to that effect so that you will deal with those who have not taken their job serious. In the absence of this, how do you call such things? It's genocide. It's absence of government. People in the villages have no idea whether there is a local government, whether there is a state government, whether there is a federal government. They have no feelings, they have no presence of any. In the villages, very big towns or villages, have no presence of any. So, if they that have their resources, manage their resources, governors run their state as president in their own states. And the law says the commissioner of police shall be answerable to the governor of the state. That is another issue. We were, we were, we, I was going to, you just took it out now, before. Now, yes. Now, these are the things before you are after mm. that you need to aggregate upon and interrogate yourself as a human being before putting it even to the public domain. And you, you are the answer to yourself is that something fundamentally is fault. There's a great disconnect. There's lack of loyalty. There's a deliberate attempt to, to create crisis. Mm. Now when you talk about governors being chief security officers of their state, uh, some would also argue that this is just on paper. We saw the Magodo incident that happened just uh, uh, last week. You know, when the uh, Lagos State Governor gave order to a police <coughs> officer who refused to take the governor's order, saying he had back up from IG and also the Attorney General of the Federation. Now, would you say that the governors are really the security officers of their state? The governors are security officers of the state. 
But these people don't take orders from no, them. No, no, no. You see, they are, they are mixing the two. Mm. They are mixing the two. Everybody should know his part. There is what is federal uh, authority. There is what is state authority. Now, in the federal authority, under the autonomy of the federal government, and then there was a Supreme Court judgment, and then there was a need to enforce the Supreme Court judgment because in the absence of enforcing Supreme Court judgment, mm -hmm. now you are, you are saying there is an act. If a, if a court gives a judgment, you like it, you don't like it, you must comply. Mm -hmm. If it is something you can appeal, you appeal. But the highest court of the law gave a judgment. And then the, the Attorney General of the Federation, in conjunction with the Inspectorate of Police, we are directed to enforce compliance. That is the federal government, mm -hmm. not the state police. Even if it is under the state government, it is the Supreme Court of the land that made that judgment. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a deliberate act of showbiz in order to create a political state. But a commissioner of police attached to the state, the law state, shall be answerable to the governor. When the governors go to crisis areas or anything, you will see the commissioner of police accompanying them, the director of SSS and so on and so forth. And then the governor has the state assembly to make laws for the good of the state, to appropriate for the state. And that is why the judgment of the Supreme Court who say that EFCC have no power to arrest a governor who has served the state. Mm. That is the truth. Because that money was approved by the state assembly. Expenditures were... But it is the state assembly responsibility to prosecute the governor who misappropriate their funds within the court of the state and send him to prison. Mm. And that would checkmate all these excesses and, and, and exuberancy and criminal behavior of some of the people who are giving uh, trust to run the state and to the resources of the state. That's the truth. Partly the time allotted for this program is up. I must thank <laughs> you very much. The National Secretary of the Social Democratic Party, thank you thank so you much pleasure. for thank coming you. on the program. Thank you. I have to invite you next time for us to finish up on this <laughs> topic. Thank you so much thank for being you. there. That's about the size of our program today. We'll see you again same time next week. Eight years jail sentence handed up to Rashid Maina, former chairman of Pension Reform Tax Team, on November 8, 2021. For money laundering, it tells one of the telltale evidence of the bare face in dignitaries pensioners in Nigeria, mostly senior citizens, suffer a further indication of this grim reality, which also borders on impunity and corruption, is the open 400 billion unpaid to retirees who subscribe to the contributory pension scheme. The quantum of firearms in the hands of non-state groups in Africa is at a red alert level. Nigeria, a new report by SMB Intelligence, an open society initiative for West Africa, put the number of small arms in circulation in Nigeria in the hands of civilian non-state actors at 56.06% of the total in West Africa. This is alarming. 
Nigeria is among the top 20 cattle producing nations in the world. Place 14th in the A-list brackets with estimated 20 million heads of cattle. With this profile, the ranching option is both imperative and logical as opposed sedentary or open grazing. Inside Out, weekdays only on Liberty Television. People with special needs are individuals that require assistance due to their disabilities around the world. Women contribute a great deal to the social, cultural and economic development of their communities. The story is the same in the northern part of Nigeria. Women with special needs are doing their very best to add value to their communities. My name is Hawa Umusa Abdullahi. I was born in Kaduna 5th January 1991. After that, I was brought up in Kazuna. I started my primary school in Kazuna. FC Staff School in Kazana, that's Federal College of Education, the primary school within the premises of the school. Uh, I did my primary one to primary six there. After that, I had my common entrance exam. I got an admission into uh, Federal Government Girls College, FGC Balkori. Um, I graduated from Balkori. Uh, after graduating from Balkori, a year after my secondary school, that was when I lost my sight. sitting at home doing nothing so time to time I do listen to programs on the radio station so I do contribute in one of those programs so when contributing I do tell the presenter if not because of this challenge that I'm facing I would have gone far in life I would have been somewhere by now the presenter will tell me that see you are not disabled to me you are not disabled so you should just come out and go and learn how to read and write uh, the Braille writing system and learn a lot of skills because we have a lot of uh, people that have this special need and we have staffs here within the radio station that have challenge and they are still doing well in life so you should just go and learn how to read and write. After the classes I went and had a jam examination got an admission into Kaduna State Polytechnic where I studied mass communication. I had my diploma. After the diploma, I went for a four month uh, internship in Federal uh, Radio Cooperation, that's FRCN here in Kaduna. Later, I went to uh, Liberty Radio for a one year IT. After my IT, I went back to school for my HND where right now I'm in my final year. Um, I, I know how to make a lot of things. I, have, I know how to do a lot of things, a lot of skills. I can, make, I can do the bead work. I know how to bead, do bead work, how to wave a chair. Before when I was sighted too, I can do the woodwork, but now which is no more, but presently I can do the beadwork, I can make a handbag, pause, a lot of things with the bead, then the wave of the chair, yeah. 